Hello everyone, uh, thank you for coming to my presentation today about um, the application process to IOE graduate program. So I'm associate professor in the Department of Industrial and Operations Engineering at the University of Michigan. Uh, I'm also the chair for graduate recruitment and admission uh, committee. So today I would like to cover both the application and admission process in our PhD and master uh, programs. First of all, some important dates and information. Um, the GIE score is not required anymore uh, for both master and uh, PhD admission. So uh, we also get a lot of questions regarding if you have a GIE score taken already, can you submit it? Um, I want to make sure that uh, we're clear here that we will not take into account the consideration of the GIE score in our admission process. And this started from last year, uh, 2000. Um, 21. Okay, so for the fall master uh, program application, also some of the masters uh, go through a SAC process, which is a four plus one uh, coming from our undergraduate directly to the master program. Both of them, the application deadline for the four admission twin, um, is uh, January 15. Okay, normally for our four PhD application deadline is uh, December 10 uh, of the previous year. So if you are uh, coming, let's say in fall 2022, uh, you should submit your application by December 10, 2021. Okay. And also uh, for our program, the application fee is waived for US citizen and permanent resident. Uh, here are some uh, important links for either the master application or the PhD application. If you want to know uh, the admission process overview, we also have other links uh, related to those. So I will definitely encourage you to go through all these uh, the detailed content on these links after this talk. Okay, so first of all, let me uh, brief overview the uh, the master mission and recruitment process. Basically, for the master, we will have a specific program which is called uh, SACS, uh, which allows the current UM students with GPA uh, three point five or above to receive both bachelor degree and master degree after completing a minimum 152 credit hours. So the details of SACS is right here, and it will apply to you if you are current uh, UM undergraduate students in IOE, okay? Um, but also um, there is some other combined, combined graduate program options listed in the link above. And then for the other master's uh, uh, students who come from uh, you know, different parts of the world, um, different uh, universities in the US or international universities. The four master application deadline is January 15, as I mentioned before. And normally starting from February, we will start reviewing all the applications and offers of the mission will start being made. Uh, so usually we do not do that in one round as you expected, because uh, we have people also in the wait list and then who are also outstanding students, but we cannot admit all of them altogether. And once the people in the earlier batch sort of like turn down our offers and we can move on to the later batch, okay? So this process will continue, I would say through February and March. And then uh, normally in all the uh, mission letters you get from the uh, US, there is a common deadline for you to make a decision, which is April 15. So you need to make a decision by April 15. And after that, we will know who is coming and we can, uh, there may be some continuing offers, uh, admission letters we send out to master, other master students who are on the wait list, okay? So this is a master uh, process. For the PhD process, the procedure is a little bit different. Um, so the PhD, we have a PhD recruitment weekend, or we call open house, uh, usually happens in early or mid February. So uh, for that, we will invite uh, domestic or international students learn about the program through meetings with faculty and current PhD students. Uh, the applicants also can learn about the CDs, right, and then also um, uh, the universities through these uh, tools. And sometimes the tools can be uh, the virtual tools uh, if you know we have to do that way. Um, the faculty can also use these meetings to evaluate the students uh, sort of like a preparation uh, towards PhD, okay? Then um, late February, early March, we will start uh, making offers, okay? So these offers are not only done by the central committee, but also we will have faculty meetings, have all the faculty to give their opinion on mission uh, meeting students. And then these offers were sent out as batches as we uh, talk about for the master the same way. 
Okay. Some of the students will be placed on the wait list. And then once the offer submission starts beginning to made, um, and then these will usually not in one round. Okay. The, again, the deadline for making these decisions is April 15. And then although you know you may have some push from some schools because most of the time the PhD are paid. So, um, but we want to make sure that um, for us, April 15 is the deadline and we respect that, that you need a certain time to make decisions, right? So while University of Michigan, uh, first of all, Michigan is a very comprehensive university. It has 100, more than 100 departments uh, ranked top 10 in their field. Uh, and then, you know, it makes the multidisciplinary type of research uh, very doable here. Uh, that's especially true for both course taking and also doing research um, as PhD students. And then we also have a lot of cross campus initiatives like um, probably you heard before from various channels, some of, uh, some of them are MIDAS, MICD, uh, MCD, Precision Health, and also Robotic Institute. Uh, these places offer, um, you know, kind of like certificate to students and also let you to explore uh, courses and also research opportunities with uh, faculty and also with uh, internship with companies using data science computational tools and also, you know, with a lot of different applications. Students can further apply for a student fellowship in this institute and also they can get the uh, computational or data science certificates there. Anaba is also a very welcoming uh, community. Um, we close to a very major international airport, and also it's a rank number one college town to live with tons of funds uh, of activities throughout the season. So uh, to name a few, you know, like uh, in the summer, we'll have a kayak, and also in the winter, you can do a lot of uh, different, you know, uh, skating and uh, winter sports, okay? So it's a very good place uh, to, to live, especially as students. Uh, the examples of some of these certificates that I was mentioning, and you can go to these links to further investigate, I listed here are from the Data Science, the Computational Discovery Engineering Institute, and also the Precision Health, STDP, and STS. Uh, and then there are many more here listed on the RECAM website. So in addition to the degree you get, which um, either master or PhD, you can also get some certificate uh, in certain concentration areas. Okay. And why IOE, right? So our department, the graduate program in our department ranks number two in IOA field. And also uh, we have a very uh, flexible course selection process. If you want to kind of like double counting some of the classes, it allows you to do that uh, so that you can have a double master major or obtain a master degree while you do a PhD. Uh, we also have world-renowned faculty in different areas, including operations research, risk management, data science, ergonomics, human factor, uh, business operations management, with a lot of uh, application expertise as well. So uh, we have faculty working on supply chain, healthcare, energy transportation, disaster response, and so on. Okay. We have a wide spectrum of courses that are offered to you through engineering, um, and then focus on maybe optimization, data science, uh, business analytics, economics, and et cetera. We also provide a peer mentoring for all the master and PhD students. We have uh, a wide range of career choices and also our professional network is, uh, has a lot of alumni, okay? Uh, so these include both master and PhD um, from our department. So for the master program, uh, there are some sort of like features I would like to point out. First, uh, IOE master student can sign up a specific special topic course, which is IOE 591, in which we will invite our, our alumni from industry to present and interact with the students. So those are very good channels for you to learn real world problems using IE skill sets uh, to solve and also uh, interacting with our alumni to get uh, some uh, internship opportunities, right? So the student can also sign up for independent uh, study credit hours with faculty members to work on research related problems during the master study. So these uh, up to six credit hours can be count towards your total number of uh, hours you need for a master degree. IOE has very competitive master fellowships and also uh, potential summer internships to offer to outstanding master students. Um, some master student also, um, 
can apply for part-time jobs offered at UM, or they can apply for greater for some of our courses, and those are paid by hours. We also have a few positions in our TA ship, so the graduate student instructor for some of our courses, and also the graduate student research assistant for some of our faculty's projects that are hires master's students. So these are all different channels you can get involved um, to um, get some financial support and also at the same time learn new skills. Okay. For PhD program, uh, one thing that I would like to clarify is you do not need to uh, have a, a batch master degree to apply for a PhD. So in fact, myself goes to the PhD program directly uh, uh, quite a few years ago, in fact, uh, from directly after I complete my undergraduate degree in industrial engineering. Okay. Um, so students will identify an initial advisor to help uh, navigate the program and also get started on research project in their first year. And the first year we like to have all our PhD students funded, supported by a fellowship. So our qualifying exam at the end of the first year is a holistic evaluation of the coursework. So what courses you have taken in the first year and um, uh, whether you have uh, satisfactory grades and also the research outcome that you work with your advisor, okay? So there is no additional exam for you to go through at the end of the first year. We also provide opportunities for um, uh, mentoring you to um, learn how to teach and also other professional development opportunities in IOE to help doctoral students plan their careers. So it's not necessary you have to become a, a faculty after you're getting your degree, uh, a PhD degree. In fact, we have a very diverse career path for, for our PhD graduates. So some of my group's uh, students, a lot of them work in industry after getting their PhD. Some works as a researchers in national labs and some work as um, sort of like a professors in different universities. So, so these are kind of like opportunities you can learn them through in, um, sort of like informed student chapters and then, uh, and then some other um, professional conferences that we support you to go during your PhD study. Okay, so to get a PhD in IOE, uh, it requires either four or five years um, with one or two years of very intense uh, coursework and then the rest of the years are intensive research, okay? Uh, so it really depends on whether you come with a bachelor degree or not. Uh, normally, if you have a uh, master degree, you will go through the program uh, in, within four years. And then if you have a bachelor degree, we'll support you for five years, okay, for the PhD. So the process looks like you will we'll go through the qualify exam and then the, at the end of the first year. And then the second year, you'll take some courses and work on some research. And then at the end of the second year, we'll have a prelim exam. If you pass that exam, and that's another sort of like a pre presentation based exam to talk about your current and future research, you will become a PhD candidate. And after that, it will be a uh, research focus towards the end of your uh, study, which is the uh, defense time, right? Okay, so uh, you can find, um, you know, the, the, the websites of our current PhD student on here, and then they will talk about who they work with and then their research areas. If you're interested to know what different faculties members research areas, this is a link to check. And also, um, the, as I mentioned before, the job of our PhD student after graduation are very diverse. Okay. So um, for the PhD, um, each year a mid PhD student will receive stipend, uh, tuition coverage, and then health benefits from various sources. And then the point here is like all the PhD um, students will be guaranteed funding for the time that they're here uh, to study uh, in this program, right? So um, these funding sources will include some of them from fellowships, some of them from uh, being a research assistant, some of them are from uh, GSI, graduate student internship, uh, uh, graduate student instructors, okay? Like TA ship. The department usually will provide you full year of fellowship in the first year for the admitted PhD students. So that will allow you to explore your opportunities with different faculty members if uh, you have not decided which area you want to work on. 
For the master admission criteria, we conduct a holistic review of the, all the applications. And then um, here are some sort of like um, uh, areas that we pay attention to. So when we have the master admission, our graduate admission committee all together will review all the applications. And then based on the academic performance preparation, research or work experience, um, and then also their personal statements, statement of purpose and recommendation letters, we will have um, sort of like the first pass of the application. A subset of the uh, applicants will be selected from the, by the whole committee to further review and rank them. So after that, uh, we will review all the application, every application will be reviewed at least by at least two to three faculty members in our um, committee and eventually we will make decisions uh, in a whole rolling horizon way, right? The student who accept our offer will follow up with the university or department staff to complete visa application if they're international students and also a course selection during the summertime. For the PhD admission, we can we also conduct holistic review of every single applications, and then uh, the way we decide how to admit a PhD student is the following: first of all, our graduate admission committee will evaluate based on you know again academic performance, some research experience, uh, their statements, uh, recommendation letters, and then their research interest. And then once you know student passed this round of review. We will recommend the students uh, based on their research interests to individual faculty member in the department to further review them. Okay, so the committee will make a recommendation to individual faculty members, and depending on their area and their interest, uh, um, it could be multiple faculty members reviewing one application to find a match. Okay. So then, you know, we also have this uh, recruitment weekend that I was mentioning before that uh, we invite the students to interact with the faculty or some students may not be able to come. They can talk to a faculty via Zoom or Skype. And then, you know, the, uh, the faculty will rank them, the students in a short list and provide feedback to our committee. Okay. So then the committee gathers all the faculty feedback and host meeting to select students to offer or put them on the wait list or rejection. So again, um, we do not have an exact number. It really depends on how many faculty members are actively recruiting every year. But normally, we uh, we admit range from nine to fifteen PhD students every year in our department, and then they can be in very different areas, uh, versus uh, from operations research to um, quality control to uh, production to uh, human factors. Okay. So after that, yeah, that's all about my talk today. Um, I hope I cover enough about the, uh, the application process and how we admit students. And by the way, I would like to uh, mention here that uh, in order to, for us to identify matches between you uh, and the faculty, uh, I would encourage you to list some of the faculty's name in your uh, PhD application, okay? So as you can see here, the decision is not made by a single faculty, it's really made within the committee, but the way we like to attract the, the best students that has, um, uh, you know, they, they will make this department wonderful, okay? So thank you, and we look forward to seeing your applications. Go Blue.